instead of putting in a conventional fence here that just needs replacing periodically and doesn't actually give you anything, we're putting in a willow fetch. So about last year, we put in these, this is a red ozier willow. Uh, it's pretty productive, it's not bad at all. So this spring, it did quite well, most of them are taken, we haven't had many failures. And this spring, I've been digging out manure from the farm and adding that. So it'll fly up this year. So it's time to put in the formwork, which is these posts. Now they're not in the final position, they're just roughly in the position. They're going to be put in line with the willow and hammered in to about waist height. And then we're going to string a wire across the top of them. It isn't like a stock fence, it's not going to be tensioned. And it's going to be just placed on the top of it and just put in with um, staples. You know, big wire staples. Um, so it will follow the shape of the willow rather than a tension fence because it's never going to have to take any strain on it. As the willow comes up and gets taller than it, at a 45 degrees, we then start spiralling it around the wire. We do that with all of them. It'll form a big thick cable as they fuse together. It'll still have a wire core, but it's never going to be cut, so it won't be an issue. And then all the time, these will actually rot out and they'll be gone. But the, the basic framework of the willow fedge will remain. And every spring then we can come through and we can take either as uh, cuttings that we can sell because it's, uh, it's a nice willow, you know, you can see it's really decorative, nice colour to it. Or we can just cut it as stick wood or as mulch or buy a jar or wood chip or whatever. Um, so yeah, a bit more productive than a conventional fence. So we'll get that done now. So that's the posts in. See it already looks a lot neater. Um, it's already about halfway up. Uh, we're being well manured now. Should make enough of a difference and bring it up quite quickly. So all I've got to do now is add the wire. And you can see the shape of it. It follows the track around. And that's the advantage of this. Because it's uh, a living fence. And it's not relying on tensioning wires. You can follow curves with it. You know, with conventional stock fencing. Uh, you can only run it in straight lines because you need to have bracing at the corners just to take the tension. Whereas when you're doing fencing this way, as well as all the products it gives you, you can also come around in curves. And literally in a curve. I mean, instead of coming across here in a series of angles to try and take it around in six or seven posts to try and even it out and then have to worry about bracing it and then tensioning the wire, you just wouldn't do it. you just make it a square edge. Whereas with using uh, like this way, I can bring the wire from there around and instead of coming straight across here, I can take it around because all these posts really are acting as bottom support, just to support. It's a fairly stiff wire. It's um, some recycled fencing wire that we just dug out of the undergrowth. You know, it's something the previous owner of the croft had. So there's loads of it. It's rigid stuff. Um, and really, yeah, it's for tension steel fencing. Um, but it'll work perfectly well for this. So that will follow the line of the trees around and all the way up until we get up to the top there. So that's the next job. And that's the wire installed. So now it goes from this post here, follows this curve around that you can see is directly above the willow. And that continues on up the field, follows the track around and follows that curve quite nicely around here. It's about 60-70 uh, metres of uh, willow fedge in all. It's, uh, it's a fair length and uh, you can see how closely planted it is mostly. And there's one what's that, every 10 inches or so um, and that's the same density most of the way up the field. Um, there's a few gaps where they've died but they're going to be filled in at, uh, at some point, probably next year once we got the first generation of cuttings. So that's the willow fredging. Uh, be interesting to see how it comes up. It should look quite nice. I'm going to bring the sticks across as they grow. Instead of just bringing them straight up and across the top of the wire, I'm going to bring them up at a 45 degree angle. So it'll just be a more attractive uh, thing. Um, I only get one opportunity to do it, so I'm going to do it from the beginning just to make it look nice. Uh, from here, of course, we can put as many of these in as we like because by I don't know, two years from now, we should be pulling all the willow cuttings that we want, uh, and it's a it's a nice one, you know, it uh, it is an attractive one. Uh, so instead of being a fence that needs maintenance every year, needs the um, metal replacing, posts rotting out, 
Uh, we've got something that's regenerative, it sequesters carbon, it gives us uh, huge options when it comes to yields. Uh, so we can do cuttings, we can do biochar, uh, we can sell uh, wands for weaving, or do it all ourselves of course, um, because all of these products we can either sell or keep on craft for ourselves. Um, it gives you a huge number of options, including uh, living sculptures, um, all sorts, as well as stick fuel, if we choose to go that route um, later on and, you know, not intensively sell products quite as, uh, quite as much. Uh, so, for example, once the mortgage is paid off, you know, um, we don't have to worry quite so much about, you know, milking the asset uh, and just grow things, some things just as uh, a chop and drop or a biomass crop. Um, next year the plan is see behind me between the fence and the track there's about a strip about 18 inches wide uh the plan is to sheet mulch that out we're going to put strawberries down and then we're going to put shrubs which we'll do some this year but you know fill it in next year every five or six feet um put a, a fruiting shrub all the way up because behind it we've got a huge amount of uh, nitrogen fixation going on with some of the uh, support species so fertility is never going to be a problem here um, and we've got you know things like comfrey and all sorts growing uh, we should be self-sufficient for that fairly quickly so yeah it's a huge amount of edge so we're going to make the most of that so yeah that's our willow fridge